All right, we come to you from the Trenton Church of God on the internet, worldwide internet. We ask that it will be a blessing to you tonight. Whatever your need may be, that God will supply all your needs. The Bible says according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Ain't you glad that? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, as we start the program off, we're going to ask Brother Company if he'll come and sing a gospel song. He does a great job. We're glad to have him with us tonight. I love good singing. How many love good singing? Yes. Amen. Amen. So good to me. We wouldn't have nothing without you. Amen. Amen. Sometimes it seems like this this battle is going nowhere. It seems like all we're doing is we're fighting a battle and we're losing. But that ain't true. We got a hell shot and a heaven to gain. Yes. yes. I love this song right here. This is what it's all about right there. We need our spirit filled preachers. Oh, yeah. I love this. The teachers right from wrong. Yes. We need our old fashioned seekers who pray all night long. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. We need some good. Go another hour. 
Let me tell the people who have a pencil and paper and are ready to write down some information. Do that while you're thinking of it because another minute or two you'll forget about it. At the end of the service, we're going to give you some information where you can contact us and go you know, buy tapes, go buy the message, or give a few dollars for it. We we'll appreciate that. Brother Don, come on right now. Amen. Good evening, everybody. I said, well, I don't have it. Why, how could I do it? 
but I'm obedient to the voice of God and I'm going to pray and pray for her. And when I got back to my seat, I was speaking in other tongues as the yes. Spirit gave me yes. You don't have to know it. God can baptize you if you don't know it. Just believe. And I say, Amen. God, I want everything you got for us. Yes. And God will give it to us if we yes. sincerely ask. Yes. Thank God for Kenny and Gail tonight. They've been with me nearly two weeks. So I plan on going back and staying a couple of weeks down there. So y'all pray for me, and I'll pray for y'all. Amen. Amen. Amen.
state of West Virginia celebrating and beating uh, one another. It's been a long time since we all been together. And I thank God for that opportunity that God gave us to meet with them. It's always good to meet with your loved ones and have fellowship. And that's what we need a lot more in our homes and our families. In this second chapter, this is what every preacher in the world ought to be crying out. Listen to the one verse. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Yes. Sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Yes. Let all the inhabitants of the Lord land tremble. For the day of the Lord is coming, for it is nigh at hand. Amen. Now this is the end time message that I'm preaching. Yes. Because he said, be you ready in such an hour as you think not. The Lord's coming. So we need to cry, cry loud and spare not. Lift up our voices like trumpets and show the, the people those trespasses. And a lot of preachers today won't preach the gospel. The gospel's good news. Amen. Thank God if it if it uh, kind of knocks some uh, scales off of you, it's still good news. Amen? If it hurts you a little bit, it's still good news. Amen. So he said, sound the alarm. Blow that trumpet. I wish I had a trumpet. I'd blow it loud right now. Sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Praise God. Yes. The day of the Lord is at hand. It don't seem like the church even listens to this kind of preaching anymore. Because all the preaching that I'm hearing on TV is how much money you can get if you send a blessing, that, uh, the biggest bill you got in your pocketbook, and get a seed offering sold out there, you can get the, get your prayers answered. Don't you believe a word of it? You don't you don't buy God's blessings. Some time ago I was seen an ad in the Detroit News that said a quick and new way to receive the Holy Ghost. Send the dollar bill in and I'll send you some information. <laughs> Every gimmick that they can use are doing it today to get money. But I'm not here to get your money. I'm here to get your soul. Yes. Because that's the most important thing. Amen. You can lose everything you've got, but if you lose your soul, what would a man give in exchange for his soul? What would you give if you knew you were dying? The Russian leader some years ago offered medical science thousands of dollars that they would prolong his life for a little while, but they couldn't do it because no man has power in the day of death to retain the spirit. When God calls, you're going. Amen? Amen. So we, we know that the, don't, don't be deceived by this money that you can buy your way into life because you can't do it. Jesus said, He that hungers and thirsts after righteousness, that's one thing tonight that the whole world needs to be doing is hungering and thirsting after righteousness. The whole world tonight is... Uh, Money crazy, it seems like. But I'll tell you what, your money ain't going to do you no good. The day is coming. The Bible says they'll throw their gold and silver into the streets. That's in your Bible. Yep. And I'll tell you tonight, I'd rather have Jesus than to have the wealth of this world. Yeah. Give me, Lord, but take the, take the world and everything that's in it. I want to talk about a man that was a strong man by the name of Samson. He wanted to marry a wife. He had a grudge against some of the Philistines. So he went over to Dalton, taking his mom and dad with him. And as he went, a young lion roared against him. And he slew the lion and killed the lion, a young lion now, because he was a strong man. Now, they had been over for some time because when they came back, he saw the carcass of the lion. So he got down and he looked in it <laughs> and he saw honey back in there, a swarm of bees. Now I'm going to tell you tonight, before you can get to the honey, 
You've got to go through the devil sometime. Amen. Did you hear me? Before you Come can on. get the honey of God, yeah. you've got to go through the devil. And that's exactly what he had to do. But he rushed in there and got a handful of honey and uh, no, no, uh, no kidding. He was just stung and everything else. But he's taking it and giving it to his mom and dad and they went their way eating it. The honey is Jesus tonight. Before you can get it, sometimes you've got to fight the death. The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Yes. And that's what the church world needs to do tonight. First of all, we need to cry loud and spare not. That's right. And warn people that Jesus is coming very, very soon. The scripture tells us in the day of the Lord, it's going to be a day when people are not looking for him. People are not looking for him to come. Well, I'm looking for him. I'm watching for That's him. Right. Because I know if he don't come tonight, he'll come tomorrow. If he don't come tomorrow, I'll be looking for him to come the next day. Because we know the promises of God is yea and amen. God will not lie to his church. Nope. How many know we are the body of Jesus Christ yes. tonight? That we have the, the, the wedding garment on and just about ready to go out of here and be married to the Lamb of God. The Bible tells us that we're going to the marriage supper of the Lamb when the rapture takes place. And when we go to the marriage supper of the Lamb, we're going to be there for seven long years while there's great tribulations upon this earth. I'll tell you, I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to be left behind because I know what's going to happen. There's coming a time that the Antichrist a man will sin, the lawless one. And Second Thessalonians it tells us, Paul told the church there, he said, don't be troubled by word from us or letter from us or spirit from us that the day of Christ is at hand. He said, let no man deceive you by any means because that day shall not come except they come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed. So we know there's a falling away some people try to say that's a rapture. Oh no, that's not the rapture. A falling away. Jesus talked about the time would come that there would only be two or three in the church. Amen. But he said, I will be in the midst of him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He said, I walk in the midst of the candlestick. And that's what I'm concerned about tonight. Praise God. And so we know that, that these are the days of sadness and loneliness for a lot of folks. A lot of people today, I heard today that a hundred people have been killed in some kind of an earthquake somewhere. And it's happening every day. But the coming of the Lord is at hand. Yeah. Even here in Joel, he talks about it. Thousands of years ago, this was, uh, this was prophesied that the day of the Lord is at hand. Come on. Yes. Because Jesus said he was coming back again and he's coming back to a church without spots, wrinkle, or blemish. One, and the one that's blameless. Think about it. Blameless. You just uh, can't be a halfway. Somebody said, well, if I get out in the world, God will reach out there and bring me back. No, he won't. You'll come back like the prodigal son did. I mean, remember the story of the prodigal son when he wanted his inheritance. He wanted to see the bright lights of the city. So what happened? He went to his father. His father granted him his request, taking all of his money, and there he goes. He's going to see the bright lights of the city. He's going to have a good time. He's going to live it up. He did for a little while. He had friends for a while, but that's why he ran out of money. Had nothing to eat. What did he do? He joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he put him into the hog pen, feeding the hogs. That's a low-down job for a Jewish boy. And he probably smelt like a hog when he got there working in that, in that hog pen. The Bible tells us he would have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, but no man gave unto him. Wouldn't that be a sad commentary? Nobody give you anything to eat. You have money, lots of money. And you run out of money, you don't have no money now. And here you are in the hog pen. Looking like a hog, smelling like a hog, sinking like a hog. The Bible tells us he didn't know what to do, and finally he came to himself. You know, the devil can get you to the place 
that you don't know what you're doing. But the Bible says he came to himself. And when he came to himself, he said, I know what I'll do. I'll rise and go to the Father's house. And I'll say, Father, yeah. I stand against heaven and before thee. Yeah. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. This make me as one of your hard servants. But the Bible says the Father was looking for him and saw him afar off and ran and embraced him, put a ring on his finger, put a robe on, his, on him, amen, a robe of righteousness, amen. And the Bible says he didn't even have no shoes. Think about the devil taking his shoes, everything he had. But when he came to himself, made up his mind, I'm going back to Father's house. And he wondered if Father would receive him. So the Father was looking for him. You know, God's looking for you, backslider. You may be out in the world. You may have an experience with God. You may be out in the world. I heard of one preacher some years ago. Had a great ministry. He went back on God. He ended up in a bar. And this man walked in there and knew who he was. He didn't know nothing about sin or about the Bible. He walked in there and said, Will you pray for me, sir? He said, I'm lost. And I need to be saved. Well, here this man is in a bar himself. And he said, That got to me. And I prayed for him. And I got myself saved and went back to God myself. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. You know, God works in different ways, doesn't he? Yes, he does. But he got that old boy saved, praise God. So here is the prodigal son going back to Father's house. Father watching him afar off, looking for him. Ran and embraced him, kissed him, put a ring on his finger, put that robe on him, and told his servant, let's make a merry. And let's have a, uh, let's kill the fattest calf. And let's have a feast. And the Bible says they did. Ain't that wonderful? Praise God. That God taking that backslider back. And he will. He'll take you back. Now, I'm, I'm preaching some backslider right now, friend. I, I seem like I can just visualize somebody out there right now just saying, he's talking right direct to me. He's, he, he knows who I am. No, I don't know who you are, but God knows you. Amen. I said, God knows you, friend. Amen. And then if God knows you, he wants you back. He wants you back. So I trust that this message will bring you back to the fold of Jesus Christ. Amen. And because you don't have long to get prepared to meet God. The Bible says prepare to meet God. And so the prodigal son, they made a feast. They had a good time. There was, there was music and everything. And the elder brother out in the field said, What mean of this? One of the servants said, Your brother has come back. And the father has killed the father's calf, made it merry. He got jealous. And the father had to go out and try to entreat him, try to get him to come in. He wouldn't come in. And he said, Father, I've been with you all these years. I've never transgressed your word. I have never wasted your money. But since you never give me a feast, he said, Son, as long as you're with me. You can have a feast anytime you want to. You can have a fat calf anytime you want to. Amen. He got jealous. He said, your son, he, he wouldn't even call him brother. He said, your son, your son has come back and you've made a feast for him, a, a dinner for him. And I, you never did do that for me. But the father said, you can have one anytime you want. You can have a feast any time you want to with God. Amen. You don't have to wait to get to the marriage supper of a land. You can have a feast with God right now. I'm fulfilling the honey of God right now. The joy of the Lord is my strength and be your strength and backslider. Hear this message tonight. Get ready to come back to God right tonight. Somebody out there, God is talking to. Amen. There's probably many of them out there that he's talking to. You one time had an experience with God. You may even been baptized with the Holy <laughs> Ghost of God. And you went back on him. You lost your joy. You lost your testimony. You lost everything that you had. But I tell you, God's a good God, isn't he? Yes. I said God's a good God. Yes. He'll Amen. take a backslider back. Yes. So I thank God tonight for his grace. Yes, Dan, uh, Samson had to go through the devil to get that honey. A swarm of bees. 
And that's what we go through. We, we go through a lot of time to get the honey. Because there was a fight on every hand, praise God. Yeah. There's trials and tests that we all go through. <laughs> but through it all, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust God's Word. I can't go under from going over to the other side. Because Jesus has given me grace and power to overcome this world. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God is the one to overcome the world. We're in the world, but we're not out of the world. Thank God he chose us out of the world. A lot of people are still in the world. The Bible says if we love the world, the love of the Father is not in us. And the things that are in the world. <coughs> I'm glad that I come out of the world 50 some years ago Amen. when I made Jesus Christ the Lord of my life Amen. and I fell down on an old fashioned altar and I cried until tears flooded to that altar I'll never forget it as long as I live I was under deep conviction I'll tell you what we wonder today where is the conviction <coughs> spirit you see nobody hardly anymore has a conviction spirit Somebody said, well, God's withdrawn His Spirit from the world. No, He's not withdrawn His Spirit. He's dealing with you. You're just so hard-hearted that you just don't listen and don't hear His voice. He speaks to you all the time. He's trying to get you back. He's trying to get you back into the fold. He don't want to see you. The Bible says God has not prepared hell for the Christian, but for the devil and his angels. That's what hell prepared for. Yes? There is a living hell. There is a burning hell. The rich man lifted up his eyes and hell. He didn't try to pray himself out. You hear me, Catholics? He tried to pray himself out. He found out he couldn't get out. So he changed his prayer petition and he prayed to Abraham, that was of Abraham's bosom back then. Paradise was Abraham's bosom. But there's no longer paradise anymore. It's heaven now. But he prayed that his five, seven brothers, I think, or five brothers, would come not to this place of torment. So he changed his prayer. He found out he couldn't get out. So he didn't want his brothers to come there. He didn't want his kin folks to come there. Friends, and once you're there, you're not going to pray yourself out of hell. So don't let nobody tell you that anybody can pray you out of hell because they cannot do it. They just want your money and they'll take your money. And there have been times that I remember one time a, a woman <coughs> come to me and uh, that I rented from and sure we just had to get up the house. But she uh, came upstairs to us and she said, oh, she's just shouting happy. Said, I'll tell you, said, my husband, said, uh, I had his funeral a while ago and said, boy, I'll tell you, said, they prayed him out of hell. Prayed him out of hell. Said, it'd take him a lot of money to get him out of hell, but we had the money to pay the priest to pray him, pray him out of hell. I thought myself, I was just a baby Christian. I knew better than that myself. Amen. Once you get to hell, you're not going to get out of there. Amen. You're going to be like a rich man. I got Bible for it. Amen. So don't let nobody deceive you. This is a deceiving time in the church world. People are being deceived by false doctrine. People are being deceived because of money. They think they can use their money to buy a blessing from God. I hear it all the time. Send a thousand dollars seed off of it and you'll get blessed and God will send you three or four more thousand back. Don't you believe a word of it? You don't have no problems with that. God hasn't promised you any uh, a thing like that. He promised you if you will pay your tithes and be obedient to, to His commandments that He will bless you abundantly. He said He will not withhold any good thing from those who walk upright they be for Him. Thank you, Lord. Now the people in Bible days in the Old Testament in Malachi they, God said you have robbed me. They said, wherein have we robbed you? He said, in tithes and offerings. In tithes and offerings. That's, yeah. what they, that's what they said. And the Bible tells us that he said, this whole nation has robbed me. And he said, I will cut off their blessings. I'll cut off their blessings. So I don't want to 
I don't, you know, I don't have to pay some preacher, amen, to give me a blessing. I, I can give my money to God and do the work of God. And your money belongs in your local church anyway. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't get it, but the church gets it. Praise God. So I want to sound this trumpet. I want to sound it loud because these are the fine times of our life. Never in history have we seen such things happening so quick. It seems like it's happened so quick. Come on. Amen. By the hundreds and thousands are being murdered. Heads been, the Revelations tells us, in the 20th chapter of Revelation, that those that were beheaded for the word of God and the testimony that they held, and white robes were given to them, that they, and, and they were told to rest a little while until their fellow brethren would be killed like they were, and that means you and I tonight. Amen. Now you think it's over with? Oh no. They're here in the United States. They're here. And they're ready any time they get the signal to strike America. Friends, I'll tell you, it's time to wake up. It's time to wake up. God's crying aloud, sparing out, lift up our voices. Come on, preachers, get off that, get off that uh, uh, money business and begin to cry aloud. God will meet your need. God will bless you. God, if you preach the truth, if you preach your cross with Jesus Christ and the blood of the Lamb, God will meet every need according to your riches and His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. I believe it with all my heart and I'm not going to compromise. I'm not going to sugarcoat this word because it's the word of God. It will stand when this world is baptized in fire. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Now this body may be getting a little old. But it's not in despair. Amen. And I don't need Sister Gail's rocking chair. <laughs> I got a little hatty hole in my veins, and this gray hair don't mean a thing. I'm not ready for the junkyard yet. I'm going to have my silver church of God to be. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. And your strength. Yes. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. When you get the honey, you get Jesus. Oh, he's sweet. Amen. He's sweet, isn't he? Yes. He meets every need if we'll trust his word. If we'll lean on him. You know, that's why John John went and just leaned on him, even at the supper table. He said, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine. He didn't say wine now. I'm not drinking the fruit of the vine until I drink of the new in my father's kingdom. He talked about the marriage supper of the Lamb. Amen. Oh, God. What a day that's going to be. When we go to the marriage supper of the Lamb, when the rapture takes place, God calls us out of here. Somebody said that word rapture was not in the Bible. Well, neither is missionary. Thank There's a lot of things that we use. But in the Old Testament, in the book of Hebrew, in the Hebrew, you'll find rapture. So we know that it comes the rapture. It comes the time that Jesus is going to step out. And God's going to send him after the bride. Time to go get to church. That's got on the wedding garment. The Bible talks about the wedding garment. It talks about the woman growing up. That's the word. In the book of Revelation. That means the church is growing up. And the church has been here for 2,000 years, about 2,000 years now. And that's when he promised he was coming back. Now, we don't know our, account, our calendars. We don't know if it's right or not. But we do know it's at the door right now. Just like this scripture of prophesied that it's uh, at hand right now, the day of the Lord. Is Amen. That's how close it is, friend. <laughs> Those of you listen to me, you're sinners, you don't know God, you just absolutely, well, perhaps you just turned in the, the channel and you've turned in this program. And you couldn't turn it off. Yeah, sure. I said you couldn't turn it Come off. On. Amen. You had to sit down and say, i got to hear that crazy preacher. <laughs> you may be laughing at me, you may be mocking me, you may be drinking your beer, but I'm going to tell you, God's going to have the last laugh, so you might as well get ready, amen, to get saved, get born again, and give your life to the Lord, 
because he loves you far more than you can understand tonight. Amen. Because he loved me so much when I was a sinner. I wasn't no angel when God got me. I was living a bad life. I mistreated my wife, my children, everything else. But he changed me. You become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Yep. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. That's right. Something happens to you on the inside. Yeah, yeah. You, you get born day again. Nicodemus came to Jesus. He was a ruler of the Jews. He was a great man, powerful man. He came to Jesus by night and warned about time to be born again. Jesus said, The wind bloweth and thou heareth it, but you can't tell from where it come from and where it goes. So is everyone that's born of the Spirit. So you got to be born. He said, you must be born again. It's a must Amen. be born again. You don't come up and shake the preacher's hand, sign the church register and say you're a Christian. You've got to have a conviction. You've got to, you've got to be sorry oh, for your sins. You, come on, somebody say amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. You get sorry Praise for your sins. I'll tell you, amen. then you can get born again. Praise God. The Bible says repent. That means turn from the way you're going Come on. and go the other direction. God loves you so much. Yes, He does. That Jesus came from the portals of glory. Yes. He came to give His life upon an old rugged cross. Yes. Oh, yes. For the Lord. suffering of humanity. What Adam and Eve sold us out, committed high treason, came upon the whole human race. We've all were born into sin. The Bible says in the Old Testament now that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. We've all like sheep have gone astray and the Lord has laid on Him the iniquity of us all. Amen. Think about it. He takes my right. sin. Yeah. Who put Jesus on the cross? I'll tell you. They said, well, the Romans did or the Jews did. I'll tell you who put him on the cross. You put him on the cross. I put him on the cross. We all put him on the cross. Yeah. He died for our sin. Yes. We might have yes. life and that. My God, have it for a moment. Come on. I'm feeling like a spell like here in a minute. Praise God. Gotcha. Because, <laughs> oh, hallelujah. This is wonderful to be a Christian. Yes. Fill your head at night. If it was a nuclear war or atomic attack, you are ready to meet God. Yes. Amen. God, thank God. Thank God about it. Amen. Think about it just for a moment. Some 50 some years ago, when I looked up and he looked down, in an old, little old country church, wouldn't hold 25 people, I guess. I fell out an old fashioned order. When that preacher got to preaching on the blood and walked in front of me and said, Son, you need to be a Christian. He already told my wife, You get him over to church, God's going to save him tomorrow night. <laughs> Somehow she got me over and got me on the front pew. I don't know how she ever in the world she ever done that. Me and my buddy and his wife, we were going to go to the bar after the service, but I never made it that time. I never made it that night. <laughs> Praise God. I went to the altar. I give my life to the Lord. I become a new person immediately. God changed my life. Praise God. Amen. I lost my seal for the world and for everything that's in it. Because I know that there's a better home for me. I'm so happy tonight to, to be a Christian. I'm so yes, glad. I'm yes, amen. Yes. I don't have to worry if I die where I'm going. I know where I'm going. Amen. Could, this is another program. Yeah. Isn't yes. Well, I don't. People say, well, I don't know whether I got God in me or not. Well, you're not saved. You don't know it. You, you. Could, this is another program. You know that you've been born again. Amen. You know that something changed you. You know you're different. You talk different. You look different. I'm not looking different either, though, but you're still ugly. <laughs> amen, if you get saved. Right? Come on, somebody say amen. 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 <laughs> but you are changed by the Spirit of God that lives in you. 
We are the vessels of God tonight. Vessels of honor for Him. The Bible tells us that we're living lively stones, building up on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, and Jesus Christ Himself being the chief form of stone. I like that phrase. God. We're building Thank on you, the Lord. You know, Jesus said, I like it. I can't quit. I liken to a man that will hear these sins of mine and do with them and build his house up on a solid foundation and the wind blew and the rain came and it stood the test. Well, I liken a man that will hear these sins of mine and do with them not. And he builds his house upon the sand. There's no foundation there. The same storm came on both of them. One stood, the other and fell. You may be building up on the sand right now. You may be like the man that said, I know what I'll do. I'll tear down my barns and I'll build bigger barns. I got all the goods of the world. I got I've got so much out of goods and so much money, I don't know what I'm just gonna tear down my barns and build me bigger barns. But the Bible says that night, God said, Thou fool, your soul is reward of you. That's gonna happen to a lot of people. Yeah. The Bible talks about the rich in the book of James. Go ye rich man, weep and howl, for your misery has come upon you. They tell us now, I heard the other day, that ten bankers committed suicide. Not very long ago. Banks are folding up. That's the day we're living in. That's why I'm crying loud and I'm going to fire not and lift up my voice like a prophet and tell you, you better get right with God. Amen. Because he's coming with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead and Christ is going to rise first and we which are alive are made yes, in the moment Amen. in the twinkling of an eye. That's how quick we're getting out of here. Praise God. I ain't going to need no rocket booster either, man, to get me out of here either. <laughs> going up by the power of God. If you don't believe in shouting, don't get on the clouds with me because we're going out of here with a shout. Yes, <laughs> I said we're going out of here with a shout. Yeah. Go away. Go away. Yeah. God, I feel like going up right now. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, boy, when I work with one time, I look across the aisle. I don't know, about 10, 15, 20 yards. He's over here jumping like this. I, I walked up and what are you doing he's not practicing with a raster? <laughs> Sometime later he was a bathroom boy. Sometime later I, I thought I, I caught him looking at me and I started jumping like that. He going and said, What are you doing? I said, I'm practicing for a raster. He said, You look like somebody in heck for the raster <laughs> <laughs> Oh praise the Lord. But there is coming the rapture. Blow the trumpet. Sound the alarm in my holy mouth. That's Israel. Let all the inheritors of the world land tremble, tremble, for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. Amen. That, that was prophesied years and years and years ago. And we know it's coming to pass. <coughs> Are you ready to meet him? I don't want the people in the world that listens to this program tonight. Your life is miserable. You may be on drugs, you may be on alcohol. Your children are lost. Your home is divided. Your husband's left you. Your wife has left you. You need help. You're like I say, people are crying in the, in the spirit. I, I just can't help them saying that. And I can be so happy for this. And preacher, I need to help. I mean, I need God. Hallelujah. I heard the message and I need to be saved. Yes. I want you to pray this prayer with me. Repeat this sinner's prayer with me. Yes, Father. Say, dear God in heaven, dear God. in the name of Jesus, I'm lost. I've heard the word of God. Yes, Father. I'm lost. I need to be saved. I was, yes, was a Christian, but I went Father back to God. God. The of the I'm asking him to take me back tonight. He will, honey. He'll take you back. 
He'll give you everlasting life. I want to be a Christian. I want to know the Lord. I've never known Him, but I want to know Him. I'm tired of this kind of world living. I'm tired of the sins. I'm tired of the drugs. I'm asking God to deliver me from these drugs and alcohol. I'm asking Him to do it tonight. If you give your heart and life to God, He can help you get over this stuff. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Say, Lord, write my name in the land of your life. Come into my heart tonight and redeem me with your precious blood. And I'll serve you all the days of my life. I'll follow you in water baptism. In the name of Jesus, I humbly ask and pray. Amen. Friend, if you prayed that prayer, I believe with all my heart. If you were sincere, I believe with all my heart God come into your life right now. I believe you're a born again Christian. I believe you know it in your spirit right now. You've had a change. I got tears in my eyes because I know you've got tears in your eyes. Right now. I'm going to ask Don if you come and give you some information with your pencil and paper and ready to lay down. First of all, we're going to pray for these prayer petitions that come into us. Pray that God will save people and heal people, whatever their need may be. Oh, praise God. Father, we lay our hands on these prayers. Yes, Father God. Yes, Father God. We have to do this prayer. We have to do this prayer. There's no one that's ever asked. The 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 one starts with you just sitting down, writing a letter to the Trinity Church of God, put a tension pastor on it, we'll go right straight to him, we'll add it to our table over here, and we'll continue to pray. Our address here is 35 Roaring, that's R-O-E-H-R-I-G, Street, Trent, Michigan, 48183. Again, it's 35 Roaring. Street, Trenton, Michigan, 48183. The second way that you can contact us is to send us an email. Send it to Donald Drews50 at gmail.com. It's all one word, all small letters. Donald Drews50 at gmail.com. The third way is to visit us on the web. We have a website. All of our all of our services that we take are right on this website. It's TrentonChurchOfGod.com. There you can see what we're about. You can read on our front page. There you can pick up past sermons. Just look through them all. There's that. There's over a year there. Just click on that month and it'll bring up each service in, inside that month. You can also order tapes, tape of each service. I, you know, we, we, we have a sale that we, we do. It's um, they're five dollars each, or they're um, two for ten. And if you want um, four of them, we'll give you four for um, ten. But you got to include four dollars for shipping too. Also, there we have a contact form. You can fill out your prayer request. If you want to um, ask a special thing of the church and stuff, just fill it out. It'll come straight straight to us. We'll print it out. Let the pastor look at it, read it. We had some special requests this past summer, and that. And um, the pastor has called and granted granted those. And that also too, you can go online and you can give the church a gift, or you can pay your tithes online. We have some people that do that. When you fill out all of the the, the spots that is necessary, you'll get a receipt number. It's kind of long, but it's a receipt number that'll show. 
that you've done everything correct. And you don't have to worry, it's very secure. So that's TrentonChurchOfGod.com. Here also, we have a powerful prayer cloth ministry. It's three crosses on a hill. We'll anoint this prayer cloth. We'll pray over it, and we'll send it to you. And it says on Acts 19, verse 11 and 12, and God brought special miracles by the hands of Paul. So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons. And the diseases departed from them. And the evil spirits went out of them. But just remember, it all starts with you. Now, if you have a home church, we encourage you to pay your tithes to your home church. We don't want your tithes here unless you want to join this church. Unless you want to become a part of this. Then, and only then, can we take your tithes. Other than that, your tithes belong to your home church because your church needs it and that pastor might need it. Might be part of his salary. So, we have three services. One on Sunday morning at 10.30. 6 o'clock on Sunday evening and Wednesday at 7 o'clock. So come, be a part of us, get a blessing, and be a blessing. Thank you. All right. God bless you. Until next uh, service, we'll be, uh, be praying for you.